Oh, and by the way, while we're here, that thing that we started talking about, about how Gaussian densities have most of the mass concentrated near the mean? No. No, no, no. Not in higher dimensions. Things get weird. Let's consider what happens with an n-dimensional Gaussian for high n. Let's say that we just have mean, zero, and unit variance. Then, what's the probability that you're within distance capital R of that mean? Well, of course, that probability is given by integrating the probability element, by integrating over a ball of radius capital R, the, the Gaussian, 1 over square root of 2 pi to the n, e to the minus 1 half length of x squared dx. Now, ooh, this doesn't look like fun, but let's simplify it. Let's make it easier. Let's say, look, that, that exponential, that negative exponential, it's bounded above by 1. So let's just erase it and say that this integral, this probability, is less than or equal to, and actually it's much less than, uh, 1 over root 2 pi to the n, that constant, times the integral of dx over a ball of radius capital R. That's the volume. Oh, but wait, we know the volume of a ball of radius capital R. We computed that, and hey, that had a 2 pi to the n over 2 in the numerator. So that cancels with this guy in the denominator, and with a little bit of simplification, we get an answer of capital R to the n divided by 2 to the n over 2 times gamma of n over 2. That is quantity n over 2 minus 1 factorial. Now that is an upper bound on the probability that picking a point at random in ND is within distance capital R of the mean. So, so what? Wait, wait, for large N, this is really, really close to zero because factorial always beats exponential. What is happening? I pick a point at random and it's not close to the mean? Where is all the probability? Is it out at infinity? No, that can't be the case. If I pick a point at random and it's not near the mean, and it's not way out at infinity, where is it? What do we do? I, I'm having a crisis here. Well, no, let's relax. Let's calm down. There's a theorem that specifies exactly where the mass is hiding in this setting. This is a, a simplified version of this result that's obtained by doing these integral estimates, by analyzing density times volume. And what the theorem says is that for an n-dimensional unit variance Gaussian with large n, most of the mass, over 99% of the mass, lies outside a ball of radius square root of n minus 3 and inside a ball of radius square root of n plus 3. So for large n, these points are, are very far from the mean. They are focused about a sphere of radius square root of n. So even though there's lots of probability density near the mean, there's not enough volume there to really matter. And there's this critical sphere of radius square root of n where the density and the volume balance. Now the reason for the plus three and minus three is that if you dig into the details of this theorem, this says that it looks like a normal distribution, a standard Gaussian in the radial direction. That's why you've got 99.7% of the mass, radially speaking, lying within uh, three standard deviations, that is plus or minus three, of that critical sphere. So good luck. You now know enough to be able to understand some of the weird stuff that happens in high dimensions. Some of the things that are really the basis for why studying data is so difficult and so interesting in high dimensions. With what you have learned in this volume, you can now understand and begin to tackle these beautiful ideas.